Hey everyone, we're at EVGA's offices in Brea, Brea, California. It is uh, not too far from Industries. So that's where we visited some of the other folks you've seen videos or articles out of. And I've got in front of me an EVGA 1080 classified card. So this we haven't seen since Computex. We're actually going to do, uh, I, think, I think it's not too hard to tear down. So we're going to do a quick tear down on site. I don't have my normal toolkit. Uh, but we're going to take it apart and see what the PCB looks like, things like that, what the cooler looks like. This card on the surface, so some of the, the core things to note, the FTW Hybrid would be the other high-end card that is semi-comparable to this. This one is also a 2-8-pin two power header setup, but it does 245 watts versus 215 watts maximum power draw on the Hybrid. So that's a major difference. And then uh, the VRM is a bit different, as we'll see in a moment. PCB is a bit larger. But otherwise, they're both fairly high-end cards. And this one does have an ACX 3.0 cooler on it, so should be decent for, for cooling as far as air goes. Uh, in terms of the assembly, the back plate's all held on by Phillips screws, as you might expect. You can see the four spring tension screws for the cooler itself. And then on the top side, there are technically uh, Allen keyed screws in there as well, but those just hold on kind of the accessories, so the EVGA plate. And I think they also, if you look in here, we might have a shot of that. I think they also show the, uh, or, or secure the LEDs to the faceplate of the card just from looking at it. So I think that's what we're working with for the tools. And other than that, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. So we'll just jump in and tear it down now. This is what we normally, Cut together. <laughs> Just a lot of, a lot of unscrewing. Of, yeah. I guess I can note there is next to the screwdriver right now. There's an LN2 and a normal switch. Performs the same function as the master slave switch on the hybrid, FTW hybrid. Uh, basically, if you go into the LN2 mode, you end up with 130% power target max through precision or whatever software you want to use as opposed to 120. So that's what that does. I think we've got all of the screws out. Let's see if there's also um, some probit voltage reading stuff up in the top up or over here somewhere up there uh, if you want to plug in a multimeter or something like that. And there's an EV bot header. So if you have the old EVGA EV bot hardware you can plug that in. Uh, for some additional voltage analysis or control. These are really in there. Oh, this is it. So this screw I'm on right now has a washer, which I somehow got without dropping. And I think it's, no, that's it. It's just a washer for some reason. Is that a washer? Very tiny washer. You ready? <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, they all have little like washers on them or something. I guess I can just leave them in. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so top corner up here, there's a little nut on the other side. Uh, you can just hold on to it. Now, there's like a lot of these, if not all of them, have some kind of small washer on them. So rather than pulling it off of all of the um, all the screws, I'm just going to leave them mostly <laughs> in the back plate. Uh, so that's that's what we have there. There's an example of the small washers that are on most of these. Or actually, they're not washers. They are. It's just adhesive. So it's not even a washer. It's just sticky adhesive, which is why these two, which three or four that got left on here, you can see it's just a black cover basically, I guess to prevent direct contact from the screw. Doesn't really do anything functionally, but um, that is there. Some leftover adhesive here. And we can see the backside now. I think all that's left is to do a couple of these other underlying screws that were under the back plate and then uh, get to the cooler. <clears throat> 
three screws for the back side under the back plate. All the back plate screws are over here. Yeah, there's four spring screws and then it looks like the face plate can separate from the cooler too. Okay, so that should separate now. Fan cable. Is there an LED cable in here too? Yes. Yeah. Trying to avoid pulling by the cable, but not really, not really working with me. There it goes. Okay, cool. So there's one that is LED, yeah. So LED and then fan, much easier. Okay, cool. <clears throat> well, that's a pretty advanced air cooler. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five. How many heat pipes is that? That's a lot of heat pipes. But uh, at least five heat pipes. See, one, two, three, four, five. And then there's another one right here that doesn't go through to this side. So that's six heat pipes. And uh, with the six heat pipes, I'm assuming nickel plated for the copper. So that's a copper cold plate that's nickel plated. Uh, looks that way anyway. These are probably nickel plated. Uh, aluminum fins almost definitely. And then you can see some solder points or something on the heat pipe here. But so basically held together like that the cooler itself goes on the card something like this so this is how it lines up with the pcb if you look at the pcb and the cooler it shows a few things mostly that uh, the the chokes here the inductors which are actually a different kind of inductor i haven't seen this generation those go in this slotted part in here accompanied by the capacitor banks so there's your capacitor banks and what is that is that more capacitors mosfets things like that um, capacitors, more inductors. So for the, the phases, it's a 14 plus three phase power design. And that's 14 V core, three for the memory. Uh, in theory, you get a little more stable voltage, I guess. I'm not sure if it's using any doublers or quadruplers or anything. How does this come off? Is this already loose? Do you care about the thermal pads? The thermal pads are so sticky that they actually have the uh, Micron logo and the VRAM, the text from the VRAM on the thermal pads. So uh, probably fairly high quality adhesive at least, if not thermal conductivity itself. Um, let me move these out of the way a bit. So there's your VRAM. This is a 1080, so it's the same as every other one. Just to recap, these are Micron chips. They are GDDR5X, they hit about 10 gigabits per second or so, and they are eight gigabit chips, so one gigabyte per, for, per I should say module, not chips, but uh, so two, four, six, eight gigabytes total, as every 1080 will be, and then uh, for any further analysis really on the PCB, we'd have to get Buildzoid on that, because he is the expert, but I can tell you, 14 plus three phases, and then what's going on here? Uh, I will ask Buildzoid and we'll put a title card in this video. These I think might be doublers. The main benefit of having doublers like this is that it spreads out the heat over a larger area. So that would make sense to, to get 14 phases. But that is the EVGA 1080 classified um, as far as doublers or quadruplers or whatever. It's doesn't really necessarily mean a whole lot. You can watch our uh, gigabyte FT or our gigabyte PCB analysis and our FTW hybrid PCB analysis both talk about doublers and quadruplers and how these things actually come together and what it all means and if it mean if it has any impact on quality. So that's the board, fairly large board. Uh, the extra pins you have. There's EVBot. Where is that? 
they come off with then. Oh uh, yeah. So EV bots up here and uh, all the other stuff we've already talked about. So if you have further questions or you want any, any extra information, article, link to the description below as always. Pretty straightforward process if you wanted to do this for some reason, like to put it under liquid. That would be the, the main reason would be to put this under an open loop or something like that. If you wanted to do a closed loop, you might as well buy the FTW hybrid because it, it will uh, effectively do the same thing. I guess this would be a slightly higher quality board to put under an AIO loop, but you probably won't gain a whole lot in terms of overclocking potential. But if you're buying this anyway, then that's one option, I suppose. So that is the card. As always, Patreon, link the post-trail video, links in the description below, subscribe for more information. I'll see you all next time.